You can see the zodiacal constellations from just about anywhere on Earth because of their positioning near the equator. They lie in the section of the sky along which the sun passes through, which is called the ecliptic. If you're near the equator, the zodiacs would be straight overhead. Near the poles, on the other hand, they would sit lower in the horizon. Let's draw a Libra and dive into the details of this small, yet still fairly interesting constellation. Libra is the next zodiac constellation to appear in the night sky after Virgo. It makes its evening appearance around the beginning of May. Then, by August and September, Libra begins its descent beyond the western horizon. Finding it, of course, depends on what time of night you look. In general, I do my stargazing just after sunset, right when the sun goes down. If you stay up later, you could see it in April or even earlier. It just depends on how late you're willing to stay up. By June, when I took this picture, the sun didn't set until around 9 p.m., and even then, the sky was still too bright to see it. I got this picture at about 10.20 p.m. when it was finally dark enough. Libra is Latin for scales, of course not the fish kind. In ancient Rome, the constellation represented the scales held by Astraea, the goddess of justice. If you go back further, the ancient Mesopotamians believed that it was the scales of the sun god, Shamash, the god of truth and justice. In other histories, it's seen as the scorpion's claws instead of scales. And given its proximity to the constellation Scorpius, that makes sense. Ironically, the Arabic word for a scorpion's claws is similar to the Arabic word for scales, so that might be why the different stories. Libra is a relatively faint constellation compared to some of the other ones, so it can be a little trickier to spot. I looked up the brightness of each of the zodiacal constellations' brightest star, as listed in Wikipedia and my Starwalk app. Um, they show that Libra is the fifth dimmest zodiac, so I guess it's kind of in the middle. To help you find it, I look for Antares, which is a bright, twinkling star in the southeast sky during May and June. Then follow the ecliptic, or the path of the sun, west just a little further. Try holding your hand out in front of you at arm's length, and then give a thumbs up. Line the base of your hand where your pinky is at with Antares, and then rotate it counterclockwise about 45 degrees. Just past the point of your thumb, you should find Libra. Under good conditions, you will see at least two stars there. The brightest ones are Alpha and Beta Libre. They're going to be the two easiest stars to see in this constellation. Alpha Libre, also called Zubanel Ganubi, is a multiple star system. Although it looks like one star with the naked eye, you can actually distinguish two stars through binoculars or a good camera. Here's what it looks like in my shot through a telescope. Zubanel Ganubi is Arabic for Southern Claw, which, as we discussed, was one of the ancient interpretations for this constellation. This star is about 77 light years away, which is not too far, and it has an apparent magnitude of about 2.8. Apparent magnitude, by the way, is the measure of the brightness of a star as seen from Earth. In contrast, absolute magnitude measures a star's inherent brightness. Our next star, Zubana Shamali, or Beta Libre, is, not surprisingly, Arabic for Northern Claw. It is 185 light years away with an apparent magnitude of about 2.6. So, pop quiz, which star is brighter, Alpha or Beta Libre? In my previous video, I explained that a star whose magnitude is a lower number is actually a brighter star. So, that means Beta Libre is just a bit brighter. But they're both very similar, so you probably can't really see the difference. As far as deep sky objects go, like nebula or galaxy, the International Astronomical Union doesn't point out any in their chart for Libra, so it seems that there's not a whole lot for amateur astronomers to see there. But I will point out at least two noteworthy objects that I found on Wikipedia. Near the middle of Libra is NGC 5897. It is a globular cluster. This means a spherical star cluster of densely packed stars. They are gravitationally bound to each other and are found orbiting in galaxies. NGC 5897 is 50,000 light years from Earth, and you should be able to spot it with binoculars or a small telescope. It has a visual magnitude of 8.52. Remember, you can't see anything in the night sky above 6.5 without magnification. Next, although I don't know exactly where it is, Gilis 581 is a star in Libra about 20 light years away. Orbiting it are at least three confirmed planets. Planets orbiting stars outside our solar system are called exoplanets by astronomers. One such planet, Gilis 581c, 
is in the habitable zone, which means its potential temperatures would support water as a liquid, which is essential for life. That being said, we don't know if there is water on the planet, and if there is, it wouldn't be a great place to live because the planet is tidally locked. That means, like our moon, one side of the planet is always facing inward as it orbits. So it wouldn't have days and nights like we do. On the bright side, there would be an area around the planet that is always in a perpetual sunset. Imagine that. <laughs> anyway, that's all for now. Next time you get a chance on a clear night, take a moment to get outside and look up. And as always, keep on learning and remember to smile.